Well, hello! I'd like to welcome you to my latest exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using during the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about going back to school this week, so I've got a little blurb about daily writers and everyday carry and school, so uh, perhaps you have a fountain pen you'd like to recommend, or other product you'd like to recommend for going back to school. So let's take a look at the pens. So from, uh, oh, looks like I spilled something in this. <laughs> this is a... Uh, a Jin Hao 993 case uh, last year during uh, Fountain Pen Week, I gave some away some pens to my students, and uh, so this is the cheap plastic case that they came in, and uh, they're starting to show their age. This one apparently has something in it. But anyway, <laughs> left to right, so you can see a little spill there. Uh, I have Platinum 3776, Lamy Safari, Shape for Balance, 350. Sorry, I had to look. A uh, Lamy 2000. Hey, it's back to school time, so out she came. I have another Schaefer. This is a Schaefer, we'll put it in parentheses, Imperial 330. Uh, Aurora Style. That was suggested to me that I should get out my Aurora Style so I have my full Aurora collection on display. Uh, Aurora 88. I'll admit I do own another one of these. It's just not out right now. It doesn't have as nice of a nib. Aurora Duo Cart, and an Aurora 88. So those are the pens I'm using this week. I have four more pages left in my BOMO Art Journal. And as I reassured somebody last week, I, I do have another one of these ready. So we'll have another probably a year or two in the BOMO Art Journal before I have to make some decisions as to whether I continue with the BOMO Art Journal or use another product for these shows. All right, so the first pen is my... Oh, I should zoom out just a bit, or you won't, whoops, wrong way, you won't see the pens. This isn't like a review where I want to, I need extreme close-ups of the writing. So this is my uh, Platinum 3776 with a beautiful koi finish. I uh, always thought koi ponds were really pretty, and I think this catches the colors. Uh, because of where I live, of course, I'll probably never have a koi pond, but... They're still really cool. Next week, I'll probably getting, be getting out my next Platinum pen, Platinum 3776, to test it. Um, not sure which one yet, but it'll probably be, whichever one is last will probably be my la least favorite. Uh, so this is the broad nib. I love this pen, and so regardless of whether it had slip and seal or not, it was going to be the first one I pulled out. So this has Robert Oster. Blue Water Ice. Which is a sample of viewers sent to me. I'm going to dive out of the writing sample for a second because I got myself in a little trouble last week when I wrote about that one. <laughs> uh, I don't have a script when I do these. Sometimes I have an outline, but usually for pens and use, I don't have an outline. I just come down and talk to the camera like I'm doing right now. Anyway, associations just come to me, and I thought, blue ice, that's what that's the sewage out of airplanes. So I'm pretty sure that's not what Robert Oster meant, but the short version is um, airplane jet airplanes have bathrooms. They don't drop their sewage while they're in flight because, ew, first of all. And second of all, dangerous because they're at high altitudes and it would freeze. But sometimes they'll get a leak. And the sewage will leak out. And it's a blue color because they use some kind of a disinfectant. If you've used a porta potty, you've probably seen the disinfectant. And it's generally a blue colored disinfectant. And it freezes on the fuselage of the plane. And then as the plane starts to come into land, the uh, chunk of ice breaks off. You know, as the temperatures warm up and lands somewhere, whether it's on a car, a house, sometimes a person, and can cause a significant amount of damage. And of course, ew, it's sewage. So that's where I was going with that last week. And uh, I mangled it because 
I don't have a script, I'm just babbling. So let's get back to the pens. All right, I was asked uh, in my reviews, I should start doing a comparison pen. I was gonna use this one, a Lamy Safari, because a lot of people have one. Uh, but then I realized I don't keep it inked up all the time. I'm probably actually going to use the Lamy 2000, because that, at least in the winter, is inked up all the time. So this is a fine point. I have Lamy Coral in it. I have read on Fountain Pen Network that Lamy is going to come out with 10 new ink colors. I've heard rumors about what they are. Nothing def that I consider def definitive, but I'll just point out, for the last few years, they've been doing a special edition ink to go with their pens. And I have wondered if these special edition inks aren't going to reappear at some point as regular line Lamy inks. I don't know. Uh, this isn't one that particularly needs to come back. I use this as a highlighter and... Uh, sometimes to correct papers. And uh, I would like to see the orange one come back. I missed out on that one, and I wish I wouldn't have. Ah, this is a Schaefer Balance 350. It's probably from about 1935. I'm, I got to doing the rev this episode late tonight, so I'm actually going to batch film my reviews all tomorrow instead of tonight but this is one of the reviews I plan to film and beautiful finish I had to do a lot of restoration on it it was filthy the ink sack was cracked and hard oh look uh, now you know who owned it before I did um, lots and lots of cleaning it's still not perfect but it's better this is also my chance ahead of doing the review to see if the ink window shows up, but apparently not under this kind of lighting condition. There's a slight ink window there, which is kind of neat for a lever filler. So, Schaefer. Well, actually, I don't know a nib size. I'd go with fine, but it doesn't have one written on it, so I won't try to guess. The ink in it is not Schaefer ink. I, oh, a couple of years ago, I was given a like a sample vial of Schaefer green, a vintage Schaefer green. It wasn't, you know, I used it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. So I put in an ink from competitor of Schaefer, Parker Quink. Uh, now, a couple of weeks ago I was using a pen, and I had the comment that that really doesn't look like Parker Quink Blue. And the pen I was using a few weeks ago was this Geha Boy. Parker Quink Washable Blue. Parker Quink Washable Blue. I think they are the same color. It just looked a lot different, a lot more expressive and beautiful in the Geha Boy just because I think just because of the flex and the broader nib I mean that's I won't say it's one of my favorite colors but that's actually not bad looking now my next pen needs no introduction Lamy 2000 this is my everyday carry pen my daily writer all winter I've been missing it these last couple of weeks I just love this pen. So I inked it up yesterday because school starts on Wednesday, August, what, well, next week, 22nd? I don't remember the date. Anyway, next week, whatever day that is, Wednesday. Yeah, and I already remember why I enjoy this pen as my daily writer. If you, you can't see me right now, but I'm smiling. This pen I used the way fountain pens were originally designed to be used. It just stays inked all year. Maybe it gets cleaned out at Christmas if I think it's getting gross. But yeah, just a wonderful, wonderful pen.
on my Instagram channel tonight. I'm going to do a short video on, because they have to be short, I have to keep them under 10 minutes. I'm going to do a short video on Everyday Carry versus Daily Writer. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link to my Instagram channel down below. It's really hard to do links to IGTV though. I'm not too impressed with IGTV. One of these days I have to talk about that. Although I have a very small following there, so that's something. This is a Schaefer, I'm going to put it in parentheses, Imperial 330. I do have another Schaefer Imperial, which I'll be reviewing um, probably next weekend. Uh, well, filming the review. Who knows when it will come out. This one is the one I'm filming the review tomorrow, another one. Um, nice 1970s pen. Aerometric filler. Converter, actually, because it can take cartridges, just like a Parker... 51 inlaid nib fine point just looks very 70s and if you know if you've been watching this channel any length of time you know i have a thing for slim vintage black pens so that's why i bought it plus it was a cheap vintage pen It helps that a lot of the pens I like are pens that a lot of the collectors just go, meh. So this is a fine point. The ink in it is another Parker. A Parker Quink Blue Black. I didn't used to like Blue Blacks, but uh, I... With a Japanese pen that I purchased, I was sent a small bottle of Parker, um, blue, or sorry, Pilot Blue Black, and I fell in love with the color. So now I have several different versions of Parker Quink Blue Black. Or <laughs> Blue Black, sorry, this is too late at night. I, I was out, if you couldn't tell, I, I was showering, so my hair is wet, because I was outdoors working, and um, yeah, this just ended up being way later than planned. All right. Aurora style. You know, not an amazing pen. And yet, for basically an entry level pen, it is attractive. Simple, understated, and yet there's some definite design to it. I just really like this pen. Plus, it writes well. I guess they used to have a rubberized grip. I seem to remember one of the big name, I don't remember which one. It's either Stephen Brown or Matt Armstrong reviewed this pen and complained about the rubberized grip. But this doesn't have one, so it must have been only certain models. A little bit of feedback to the nib, but that doesn't actually bother me. Aurora style, this is a broad nib, although it writes more like a medium to my eye. I was very sad that Montegrappa discontinued that particular shade of ink, the Bordeaux. I love that color. So, uh, shame. Shame on you. I, uh, I do have a, another bottle as backup, but when it's gone, it's gone. But there are probably some other colors that are equivalent. Maybe you can comment if you can think of one. Of course, my vintage Aurora 88, which is... Definitely running out of ink. I wasn't sure if it would be in this week's video, but it's made it. I started conserving ink too, so that was part of why, probably. Uh, I was asked about what are some good vintage pens that would be everyday writers. I actually do, I, I, I suggested this one. Now, uh, another commenter said, no, that's not a good one. It's too wet. I'll just say this. Some of them are too wet. They uh, came with a variety of nibs, so look for one with a good nib. I actually, when I got this, I was so en enamored with it. I was using it a lot as a daily writer, and it worked very well for me that way. Robert Oster, um... Summer Storm, which we still need one. It's getting dry here. My lawn is brown and crunchy. 
I do water my garden, so that's not an issue. Plus, it's been really hot, and I've been very glad I have air conditioning, even though I the environmentalist in me felt terrible buying an air conditioner. I have to admit, I've been a lot more lively and uh, doing things now that I have it. Okay, my next pen is an Aurora Duo Cart. I was reading, I think it was on Fountain Pen Network again, that they're going to be coming out with some new finishes. Because I guess it's really hard to find this pen right now. I had an interesting suggestion. Was it from Wayne Clarkson about uncapping it? He, he mentioned when he pulls it off, there's suction. It actually sucks the ink out of the nib, which I have noticed. Now, I didn't notice it before this ink, but with this particular ink, I've noticed it a lot. In fact, last week, there was a pause that I edited out because I had to wipe it off. But let's see. He just suggested gently push it off. That seems to have worked. Okay. Thank you, Wayne Clarkson. Unless that wasn't you, then thank you, whoever it was. Aurora Duo Cart. This actually has a medium nib, which looks more broad than their broad there. But it's not labeled as such or marketed as such. It's just they all came with the same size nib. And this has one of, I don't know why, but one of my favorite inks. Noodler's Matahari's Cordial. Maybe it's just the name, because he, he's good with names, and I just feel like there's a story behind it. I don't know. But uh, I love that color <laughs> and that ink. And last but not least, my Aurora 88. Why did I buy orange? Because I wanted the flex nib. And as some people have pointed out recently, so I'll give you a better look here. The flex may have something to do with how far it extends beyond the feed. Now, I don't know. I don't own a regular Aurora 88 other than the vintage one there to compare to. I wouldn't mind owning one, but I have other pens I'd like to own more. So we'll put it on the Sunday list. And then I'll get to find out for real. But I, for what it is, I like their Flex Nib. It doesn't quite do as well as the vintage one. It doesn't snap back as quickly. It doesn't give quite the dramatic line variation. But I think it does a good job. And it's pleasant to write with. I like how this pen feels. I was uh, drawing a blank last week about which river it was that started on fire. I remembered part of Lake Erie started on fire, but uh, I couldn't remember the river. I was thinking Ohio River. Then I was like, is that really a river? And then, you know, that whole, ooh, I'm drawing a blank and I'm on, well, on a recording. It was the Cayo. Ca now I'm going to mess up the pronunciation. I am so sorry. Is it Cayoga or Cuyahoga? I can't remember. Anyway, that was the river I was thinking of. So I think I told you that next week on Wednesday, school starts for me. So my students are dreading the day. <laughs> uh, us teachers aren't so thrilled about giving up our summer vacation either. But it's, it's that time of year and we're ready to restart. Uh, one of the exciting things going on for us this year is we're going to be starting a one-to-one -one program. Uh, our high school students will get a Microsoft Surface. And then the uh, younger students are going to get, it's called a Beck. I'm uh, not as familiar with them, but anyway, it, it's it's like a laptop slash tablet, only the keyboard and the tablet part are attached, and you can fold it under, use it as a tablet, and write on it, or you can open it and use it as a laptop. You know, it's a very underpowered but very rugged surface with permanently attached keyboard. Anyway, I was uh, part of the one, and you'd think I would remember its name, but like I said, gardening and late at night now. Uh, but I, I was part of the committee that helped select them, and one of the things I thought was important is they need to be able to write on it. Now, I don't think an iPad is a good production instrument, and our tech coordinator really didn't want to go the Apple route anyway. Uh, I don't like the iPad for uh, 
student use because it's not it's very it's a lot more difficult to type on it you can you can buy keyboards and so on but it's it's not meant made for this kind of use so this is a good compromise so if you're a user of something like that you may say okay well where's the place for this in your world because kids open up OneNote, which is an application that they'll have and they can take their notes by hand which i did a video uh, why i encourage that and i don't have intelligent response to that i suppose i will just say this i love fountain pens i love the feel of a pen on paper i love that i can take this anywhere but I also love when I'm in that environment to have less to carry around. Now, I don't get a Surface. I got a cheap Acer laptop. Uh, luckily, I got a new one this year because my old one was god-awful. But uh, And I have a Wacom Intuos, not Intuos, the cheap one, bamboo tablet that I can plug into its side or use wirelessly if it works so I can handwrite with that. So I, I have that. Um, it, so is there a place for notebooks and handwriting? I still like to think there is. I, uh, I'll be able to put this thing on the bookshelf. Uh, I'll have it there. It's easy to pull out. I've uh, been working on novel. I've got all the notebooks and notes all together on a shelf right now. Um, I, but I can see where as a student, yeah, I might go the digital route. Uh, let's just be honest. Uh, you have several types of paper available right there. As much paper as you need because it's digital. Uh, you have lots of colors. You have different points. No, it doesn't have the romance and uh, the cool factor of this. But I, I, you know, the portability is going to win there. And the fountain pen lover in me is very sad about that. In years past, I've given away fountain pens to my students. Uh, this year I'm thinking, will I do that? But at the same time, a portable notebook that you can just take home, that you can take anywhere, has a lot to recommend it. What I feel like is going to end up happening, not next year, but maybe over the next few years, is it'll end up being a mix. Paper for some purposes, online for other purposes, uh, I personally, if I, you know, if I give an open notes test, which I like those for, uh, well, the reason I like them is because they always think, oh, that means I don't have to study. No, it means you have to understand it rather than memorize a bunch of facts. But anyway, that's another video. But you know, if, if you're doing an open notes test and you've got this whole notebook and it's online to page through, paper wins. It's really easy for me to page back. You know, just like this, and I can say, oh gosh, you know, like I did when I was trying to find this uh, Geha boy. It's really easy to page back and find stuff on paper. When I'm using a tablet, not so much. You know, I have landmarks. I have, each page has four corners. It has a middle. It has, is it near the center or the outside? And, of course, the facing page has all that. Um... There's lots to recommend paper. So I, I sometimes will remember stuff by, oh, those are the notes I took with my Pilot Custom 823. Um, or, hey, I was using my Lamy 27G with the Quizzy Grapefruit Ink in it. I have weird things like that that will jog my memory. So, yeah, I think in the end, both. Uh, one thing I kind of like, I have a notebook where I take notes at school board meetings. I totally forgot there was one last night, but I didn't have to be there, so whatever. But uh, I, I take notes at school board meetings. Well, I discovered I can whip out my iPad and photograph them. Now, my personal use, I don't use OneNote. The school pays for OneNote, so that's school. At home, personally, I use Evernote which isn't as good for handwriting, although you can handwrite on the iPad. Um, I need to do a video on that, too, one of these days, digital note-taking. Hmm. Okay, I just got another video idea. Anyway, um, so I can take my notes on paper and then load them on here, and then I have access to them everywhere. 
So there's that option also, which I might encourage students to do. I'll probably show them how to do it. So uh, let's just pause this camera here for a second, restart it. I apologize, this camera tends to overheat if it goes for too long, so I shut it off and then restart it at about 30 minutes. But So if you're going back to school, look into are they going one-to-one. -one? Maybe you won't need as many notebooks. Maybe they won't have the good note-taking software. If you're typing notes, don't. If you're typing notes, um, you need a notebook. Handwriting notes is better. I never found a good study that said whether handwriting on a screen or writing on paper was better. Just a couple of those things about landmarks and so on. Uh, but you know, if you're looking at a fountain pen, if your kid is in the high school environment or junior high or possibly elementary, think about perhaps some lower cost pens that maybe aren't going to stick out as much because kids see pens as universal property. They don't see them as, oh, that's... Juan's pen, I'm not going to touch that. No, they just see it. Oh, I need a pen. There's a pen. And uh, it's a cultural thing. I mean, kids will lose pens. They'll, you, you, they'll leave them on their desks. They'll drop them on the floor. They don't care about them. So if your kid is interested in using a fountain pen, a lower cost pen, like a, there we go, Lamy Safari, uh, maybe a Pilot Metropolitan. I, unless there's somebody who's a real, a, Platinum Preppy is actually a really good pen. Uh, unless there's somebody who you know is really going to take care of their pen and do what I do at school. Oh, actually, this is the shirt where I don't have to unbutton. <laughs> this shirt has a nice thingy. Except I never wear this shirt to school because it's a, not really a school-appropriate shirt. But anyway, I do that. I keep them on my person at all times. If I'm not writing with them, they don't lay on my desk. They're in my pocket or they're in the pen case. So uh, you might want to have that discussion with your kid and actually have that discussion with them even if you're giving them a cheap dick crystal to use. Take care of your stuff, kid. Um, notebooks. Mead notebooks are cheap. There's a lot of cheap notebooks out there. You know, I would suggest against something like this. The reason the kids like a mead or one of those is they'll rip pages out to turn in at various times. Um, they're not very fountain pen friendly, but they'll you know, use a Parker Quink black or a Lamy black or blue or you know something like that. So uh, anyway, those are a couple hopeless <laughs> stationary suggestions I have for back to school. I uh, on my Instagram channel. I will be doing a video, which will probably be up tomorrow morning, where I'll talk about the difference between everyday carry and daily writer type pens. So uh, maybe you'll see you over there. Uh, down below, I put a link. I did an, a daily writer video it was several years ago. I didn't look what year I did it, but it was while I was still re recording upstairs, which I don't know if you can tell I'm sweating because I didn't shave today, and uh, but I'm sweating. This basement gets hot. I didn't notice when the upstairs was even hotter, but yeah, I guess it's too small to be a cool basement like some houses have. <laughs> anyway, I've, I uh, want to thank you for watching, and if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and all price points, and sometimes get into weird obscure subjects like blue ice on airplanes, I'd invite you to subscribe. And hey, if you want to talk about back to school related stationery, Please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear some. Um, some of the Chinese pens would be awesome. I just thought of that. Uh, there are just some really good options out there. Paper-wise, I was horrible with that. Um, maybe some inks. And by the way, free advice. If you go the fountain pen route, don't send an ink bottle with your kid to school. <laughs> send a fully inked up pen and maybe a cartridge. So, uh, <laughs> otherwise we know what's going to happen. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.